this is uh, hopefully a gentle introduction to creating, modifying, and, um, and troubleshooting city serum reports. So um, I'm here with, uh, I'm uh, Lola Slade. I'm a, a developer and client lead at Freeform Solutions. I've been with three years with Freeform, two previous years as a report developer with a not-for-profit where I uh, did um, a lot of MySQL queries and making reports for them and um, ended up implementing CiviCRM for them. So I did uh, use CiviCRM uh, for quite a while. Um, as far as Freeform Solutions goes, it's a not-for-profit um, company up in uh, Canada that works with clients um, in the not-for-profit sector and has, uh, for, has been for over 10 years. Um, as a not-for-profit ourselves, we, we uh, enjoy helping not-for-profits. Um, and the company has been supporting CiviCRM for over six years as a team. We use we currently use all open source software because of the, the values of ownership and all those wonderful values of open source um, that uh, the, that type of software provides, including CiviCRM. Okay, so about this presentation. This talk is uh, oriented to administrators and developers. Um, and uh, I collect other on the, the presentation selection. I wish they would put administrators as an option. Um, maybe not, you know, not every user of CiviCRM, but um, people who've already probably modified Civi report parameters and saved new reports, um, who maybe have not yet modified Civi report files or have started and are struggling with it. Um, maybe for people who had a similar gentle introduction to CiviCRM programming via the recent developer training or something like that. <laughs> Hopefully that was gentle. Um, I would have, uh, even though I've, I've done, done uh, the developer training and I do develop for CiviCRM um, all the time, I would actually have liked to have gone just for the very, you'll always get one or two great tips from, uh, from uh, Tim or the guys that'll be worth the cost of admission just for those tips. So I'm sure anyone who was there had a great time. Okay, um, so inspiration for this talk. Um, s reporting is, is important, really important. Uh, you know, it takes the data in our system and makes value out of it. Informa turns it into information, as they say. It's, uh, but unfortunately, we have to struggle with it a little bit. Um, CIVI report is unfortunately a bit hard or maybe a little bit crusty. <laughs> it's, it's showing its age, but it's the, it is the tool for the job. At, there's often times when it's the tool for the job. It's deeply integrated with CiviCRM. It knows about the user's permissions. It uh, can add things to the menu. I mean, um, it can print in PDF. It can export to CSV. It can add people to to groups. I mean, it, it has the feature, a lot of these features that you need that if you had to try to bolt those on to another reporting system, it would take a lot of time. So sometimes it's worth struggling with Civi report and, um, and that's what we're going to do. So there's a, for this talk, there's a supporting extension uh, with example reports um, published on GitHub. Um, so um, you can try these examples out by yourself uh, fairly uh, right after this, uh, right after this talk if you want. Um, and so quick, let's jump right into it. Um, quick terminology overview. Civi report is a PHP class basically. That can, that's, uh, that's what it is. It, it's a class that can be extended by new reports. That's called CRM report form. Uh, it provides a default Smarty template for the form controls area, for the grade area, for a bunch of other features. It, so basically it provides services to subclasses. That is, 
And so in that way, it provides a framework for creating new reports. Um, and so this, this talk is going to delve into that PHP class and some examples of creating new PHP classes from it. Um, hopefully at a, a slow pace. Um, and so the terminology in CiviCRM is overloaded. A report template in the system menus, uh, manage report templates, um, doesn't refer to Smarty templates, but it means the PHP class in this case. So when you create a new PHP class, you provide, you create yet another form for users to select columns from and save as reports in your menu. So basically a report template is a new report, is a new report form. You can also build a custom Smarty template for your, um, your, re your reports. And there's some great examples of that in, in the core. And so yeah, um, or you can use the default one. So the, the Smarty template and report template terminology, that's uh, something to keep straight. I, hopefully I will try to make sure to say instead of just template, Smarty template or report template. Um, and in CiviCRM, a report instance is those DB records when you save your report preferences, which columns you selected and where you want to put it in the menu. Does, uh, does that sound familiar to everyone? Sounds good. Yep, good. Okay, that's, that's good. So registering, um, if you create a PHP class, subclass, CRM report form, you need to register the report template. Um, basically what you're doing is mapping the PHP class name to, to some descriptive information in the system, the name, the description, and also more importantly, a web path that it can use to call that form. Um, you can use administer CV report manage templates but if you create uh, an extension and add a report to the extension, that part is handled for you. So that's great. That's, this is nicer now. Um, uh, so I'll just briefly review those two administration methods. Um, a quick, uh, quick uh, actually it seems like an interesting question. How many people have created new reports by copying them into their custom PHP folder? Okay, then this isn't, this isn't, this is good to go over both. <laughs> How many people have created an extension? A few. Okay, um, well, hopefully you'll be able to take the sample extension and work, work with it. It's, it's really, we're going to go really step by step. So that's what we're going to cover. The, the met, when you need to, if you've created a report class, and the easiest way to start is to take the, and this is what I did the first time. Uh, actually, one of my first jobs as a, as a CiviCRM developer was here, it's, um, create a new report for this customer, just add these fields. Okay, great. So that's very easy. Take that report, copy the PHP file, and then you have to rename it. And um, the reason I'm, this again gets to the motivation for this talk. The first time I did that, adding a couple fields, it was okay. Then the next request was a little bit more difficult, and the next request was a little bit more difficult, and, um, and I think it was maybe my fifth day on the job or something. So I'm like, <laughs> um, diving into that mass of code in a, a typical sample report was just, oh, the, you know, it was just painful. It's just uh, looking at, at that um, code, um, I, since then, too, at least the core team have been really good about code formatting. I mean, those files were a mess. Okay, so I'm hoping to save some of you that same process, and let's we'll go over them. Look at how we can create a report from a small, small example and build it up. Instead of diving into, for example, somebody says, I'd like to take the bookkeeping report and I'd do this and do this and do this. The bookkeeping report piece of code, it's, it's this, this long. Right? You, you feel like you need to understand it to change it. That's what we're going to do. Okay, anyway, so, but despite the fact that it's a bit of a drawback sometimes that you start with this huge piece of starter code, that's the, if you just need to make a small change, that's what you do. 
you take that file, you copy it into your custom folder, your custom PHP folder, and you make a few changes. And if you don't change the name of the class name, you are overriding the built-in report. Right? Just like you can with anything in CiviCRM, if you copy something into one of the CiviCRM core forms into custom PHP, you're overriding it. So you can override that built-in report by copying it if you don't change the class name. If you do change the class name, you're making a new one. Um, that's one thing I didn't put in the notes, but okay. I think I'll add it. I'll repost my notes. Setting up, um, so setting up new reports, manual methods. Um, first, you need to set the custom PHP and custom template directories and administer system settings directories. You're going to copy a starter report class of some type. Because it is a subclass, it's always going to start with some piece of starter code that, um, so you copy the starter report class into a subfolder of the custom PHP folder. Exactly what subfolder depends on the class name. Um, you can copy the smarty template class into a subfolder of the custom templates folder. If it's using the default template, I don't think you need to do this step anymore. Um, you, um, in my latest, in the last couple of releases, I've found that, no, actually not even the last couple of releases, it's been a while, I found that you don't need to copy the template. So it'll use the default template. Um, if you're going to make any changes to the template, of course, you'd have to copy it into it as well. Um, the documentation still says that you have to, so I'd like to get that clarified. But um, register and enable the report um, template at administer CV report. Um, oh, sorry, and then you'll go to administer CV report, create new report from template. So just a few screenshots of the process. Um, set your custom templates and custom PHP path in your directory settings. Um, and then take your your report, making special note of the class name. Okay, take your, your report PHP file and copy it into a subfolder you see over there of custom PHP. Um, and that has to exactly match the class name with the underscores becoming folders. CRM underscore CV report becomes subfolders, CV, uh, CRM under CV report, etc. Okay, so you copy that into the matching folder. Then you go to um, uh, add um, new report template and fill in the information about your report. Um, fill in an URL and a class. Okay, and again, and it's what's best is to copy and paste the class name from your PHP file into this field, even if you think you know how to type it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just switch page. Just switch apps one more time and copy and paste it because it hurts when you don't. Make sure you check the enable checkbox. It's not checked by default. And uh, hit hit save. And then you'll prob then you should see your template here in the listing of templates, um, in the section for the component you chose. So again, it chooses the section placed there to choose the component. You probably all noticed that the reports listing is broken down by the component. That means contacts, contributions, memberships. So it'll, it'll go into the appropriate section, and that's what you want to see. Now, if you want to create an extension, there's a bit of overhead up front. Um, because you will have to download and get a, your hands around, um, head around, CiviCRM build kit. Um, once you have build kit, everything is easy peasy though. Uh, there's a one liner to create a new CiviCRM site. Or um, once you have a CiviCRM site, you have uh, with build kit, you have all the tools you need, including civics. Um, so what if you uh, get build kit or you get someone to help you set up build kit, or if you went to the developer training, so hopefully you have it, then um, uh, you can do this, or you can create a local install demo site manually, of course. Go into Apache and set up your choice of Drupal uh, or WordPress and um, CiviCRM. And, um, but you'll have to install Civics, at least, to create, create an extension. 
Um, you can even create an extension manually, but I wouldn't. So then you have three commands to create a report. You create a new module for your reports. Maybe you're going to group a bunch of useful reports into a module. Civics generate module. Um, the, uh, the full length name of that. Go uh, change directories into this folder. And then civics generate report. And what you do is you put the, um, just the last piece of the class name. OK? Um, <clears throat> in this example, this was CV report, CRM, CV report 101, form report manual sample. It would just be manual sample. OK, you, put, you just put that in. Um, and you also can type in dash dash web path and the web path you want this to appear at. And it puts that into the XML that maps that for you automatically when you enable the extension. Okay, so you, you just have three commands and you have a report extension. So it's really, <coughs> really nice. And that's why I took that approach for this demo code here. Okay. Um, of course, I'd love to show you all that, but that would be a separate class, creating extensions. Uh, okay, uh, first tip before you start, because we're going to get our we're going to get uh, down into uh, PHP files, and once you do, it's going to be tempting to say, "Oh, something's not right. Um, it's not working. I'd better start adding a function here or modifying it there." Um, this is uh, in this type of work with CV reporting. Make sure you troubleshoot the SQL first. Okay. Um, that's the most important thing, is that you know exactly what piece of SQL you're trying to generate and how it should work with the edge cases, with uh, contacts who have nulls in certain fields or um, uh, contacts who um, have duplicate values in for some things. Uh, duplicate values, probably number one problem, right? With SQL troubleshooting. So anyway, um, the first thing you want to do as a report troubleshooter is to insert a debugging statement into, um, I recommend in the post process function. We'll see a lot about this post process function. Uh, so I won't show you that exactly right now. We'll see it really shortly. But put in your favorite debugging statement. So in uh, working with CIVI CRM, you might use CRM core error debug. Or you might, if you're a Drupal developer, it'd be DPM, would probably be your favorite. Or you might use an, who knows, maybe you use an IDE. Maybe you'd like to do it that way. But um, I still like the debugging statement because it's, even with an IDE, if it's going to print this piece of SQL, you know, you probably, it's easier to copy it off your web browser when you need to make changes. So you do that. You're, you're trying to troubleshoot an average CV CRM report. And you say, great, I'll debug the SQL. That's what I'm going to do. That's smart. But what you get is select 50 columns from 20 to 30 tables where, I don't know, it goes straight off the screen all in one line, right? So you're like, well, how the heck am I supposed to see what's going on? Well, that's, you know, un the, that's, you know just the, the job of uh, the report troubleshooter. So you're going to go and and take that SQL and put it in PHP MyAdmin or your uh, local SQL tool um, that you, you know, uh, whatever your SQL editor is, and select five columns, the five columns that you're troubleshooting. So if you've got duplicate values in the email, you don't need to see the address, the website, you know, all that stuff, right? So just take those, um, take the contact ID, maybe the display name. You don't need the middle name, the job title, and da, 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 da. so just what, fi what few columns uh, you're dealing with. Um, and then, unfortunately, I don't know a way around it, but um, some SQL editors have some nice auto formatting, so this part doesn't really take too long. But format the, the from and format the where so that you can read it in a text editor and then copy and paste it into PHP MyAdmin or your, your SQL editor. So that now that are the from statements, every table is on one line, you can comment them out one by one. The where clauses are all each on one line. Now you can comment them out one by one. 
see which one is causing the problem. Oh, where, you know, last donation year was 2013. Oh, that turns out to be the pro this client didn't donate in 2013. No, I thought they did. They donate every year. Okay, so, you know, you go ahead and you just have to um, troubleshoot the SQL first and the data. The data can be wrong. You know, uh, quite often you're working on a report to solve a bug or an itch, and you're working with your live data, and you're used to the way it works, and you think you expect it to be a certain way. But sometimes there's mistakes creep into the data, right? Okay, so c you can also obviously add um, extra where clauses to limit results to test contacts. For example, uh, recently I had a problem where, uh, for a client where the bookkeeping report was returning the wrong donation value, but just for one contact. Um, Sharp-eyed administrator noted, noticed this while exporting it. This one contact export was having, uh, didn't donate that much. Um, but it shows us their donation total. That's it's very strange. Um, so by following the, the previous procedure, I found that one um, dumped out the SQL statement, which was huge, reformatted it. Well, it turns out it has a group by, to group by the contact ID. Well, in troubleshooting SQL, you know that's always a problem. If it has a group by, then um, it's going to merge duplicate results. So, um, so comment out the group by, see what all the results are, put in that contact ID, see why it's just her, okay, um, as, as a where clause. Oh, yeah, she's definitely getting duplicate results. Coming out the phone table join. Oh, turns out it was the phone table. The where two phones marked is primary. That can happen in the GUI, but it can happen somehow in a database import or an API bug, but then it, something installs. So fix that one contact and then turn the query around and check the rest of the database to see if we have more contacts with the double is primaries. Problem solved. Okay? So, make sure you troubleshoot the SQL first. Source of a lot of the problems. Um, okay. Um, so now, um, let's learn a little bit more about CIVI report. And we'll see some code in a minute. The basic outline of a CIVI serum report is a class that defines columns with construct that lets the user select those columns, filters, and other options. Uh, in, in, like any CIVI CRM form, uh, based on the quick form framework, it uses the post process function uh, to process the dollar params array. Which columns are selected, all those options get sent in as dollar params. Post process, then, oh, and the color coding. Roughly, purple is classes and functions. Green is variables, and blue is array keys. Try to keep it, try to make it a little bit colorful. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, kind of dry, so hopefully a little bit of color in the life. Okay, so then um, post process basically calls a bunch of sub functions to generate dollar SQL. SQL gets ex executed to generate dollar rows, which is an array. SQL is just a string, and rows is an array. Rows gets modified further, if you want, by alter display. And then it gets displayed and assigned to the Smarty template. There's also statistics. Okay, so here's a really, really bare bones CIVI, um, CIVI report that is about as small as you can get, except that I've put in a few things just for illustration. I could make it smaller. And I like this because it shows us exactly what we need in the class file, okay? And uh, this is a really contrived example. So um, we have a construct function, and we'll be looking at the pieces of this uh, in a little bit more detail. It creates a columns and array, and what you can see here in this contrived example is that that table doesn't even exist in CIVI. Okay? It doesn't actually matter. This one works, it's one of the samples. So you can select table, you know, it doesn't matter that the first array key is table name and the field name is hello. Because those are actually just array keys. Now in all the samples, 
they happen to map exactly to the table names and the field and the field names, just because that makes sense. And uh, there's some of the default services in the parent class will map those to the select to the to generate the right select clause. Okay, but you don't if you manually build your select clause like I do in this function. You can just put whatever you want. Those are array keys. So this, this helps to illustrate that, that that's um, an important idea. So in the select, in the select um, function for this super simplified report, I just select, um, I just create a, a string. Select hello reporting as hello. I did put in the as hello so that it gets mapped to that field name and matches. Um, you also have to, okay, I'm, gonna get, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so, but you can see that you, you can manually build up the select. Um, I'm also manually just setting the from, the where, the group by, et cetera, as empty. And that is the default action of the parent class as well. So I could just delete those functions. I just wanted to show graphically that they're empty. Okay, so that's, and now we get to post-process. And this is where I said um, that you want to insert your SQL. Um, you want to insert your SQL de debugging statement of, cho of your choice. Okay. Uh, this is um, this post-process function is um, exists in most of the sample forms that come with CVCRM. It's um, now. In this case, it does exactly what the post process in the parent class does. Um, so if you have it copied into your new child class it, it, every time, it could be a problem if the parent class improves. But so it's not necessarily the case that you always want this in your reports, but you do really want it there while you're working on them. So you can quickly jump there and just put your debugging statements and modify it. Um, you can, of course, put the debugging statements in CRM core form unless you're working on a live site and then, <laughs> then everybody's, everything will be, see will be seeing a bunch of SQL everywhere. Okay, so then um, let's look um, at what post-process does. The point of the whole CV report class is to generate a SQL statement and run it to create a rows array. So, Basically, it takes dollar params that goes into post process. It uses some helper functions, select from where, etc., via um, build query um, right here. Um, I should have a highlighter. This build query. Okay, that's where it's going to run the sub functions, uh, select from where, group by, etc. So. It goes into post process. It generates dollar SQL and dollar rows. And um, this is a piece of build query. And you can see what ends up happening is that it basically just concatenates all those pieces to build up the SQL string. Um, because of this sort of limitation of that it sort of building up the string in pieces like that, um, CVCRM does still do best at sort of relatively simple cases to generate a grid of data because you're still just working with a single SQL statement um, that, um, and you don't have like a class structure like you do with something like Doctrine where you can add pieces in front and back, et cetera. It, you have to make sure everything's uh, concatenatable a little bit. That can be tricky in complex cases. Okay, so now to the example. So that first example that I showed you a contrived example to show you how much we can tear it down. It shows you some of the services of the parent class and highlights post-process. So, so here I have this uh, extension that uh, you guys can download, ca.freeform.cvreport101. Um, and it has several classes in it that have been generated. Um, when you run that function, civics generate report, it creates the class file, um, which it, the what it does is it generates a report that looks like this, default extension sample. 
I just took the one that it, it created and, um, and stuck it in there. This is, what you, this is the starter file it gives you to start with. And it's great once you're used to it. You s it is actually a good starter file. It has examples of a few different pieces that you need in the construct array. It uh, gives you a couple of examples of using, uh, getting option lists and so on. But I still felt that if you were doing this for the first time, it still looks like a kind of a big chunk. It's not as bad as starting with one of the live forms, one of the live reports comes with Civi, but it's still kind of a big chunk. <coughs> okay, so that's, that's what it gives you. And it also creates this um, .mgd.php thing, which is, um, um, <coughs> allows um, the extension to automatically enable it um, for hook Civi CRM uh, managed entities. Okay, so back to this empty example. Uh, okay. Um, Why does it need to create an MGD for a report? Uh, because uh, so that when you enable the extension, it automatically enables your report because what it does is it registers the report template at um, administer CV report manage templates. Okay. You don't have to do that step. Just if you had just copied the, like, like let's just imagine we just uploaded this extension, the PHP files are just sitting there. Civi doesn't um, have in its database where it stores its menu router, you know, if I receive this, if I click on this URL, I should show this report. Okay, so it does, it does that for you. Um, oh, developer tip. If you are developing an extension and adding reports, several reports, maybe a group of reports that are useful together, um, after you add new reports, you have to disable your extension and uh, enable it again for them to automatically be enabled in, as templates. Okay, so let's take a quick look through this. Um, we have example one empty. Um, and of course, the, the class path, CRM, C report 101, form report, has to match here the folders that it's in. And it extends CRM report form. The columns array gets built. And then we run parent construct, which does a few other useful things. So, so we're, we're just going to select, uh, we're going to build up a select statement that doesn't select from any tables. So, but we still need to tell it that we're going to have some columns. That's a, a required thing in CVCM reporting. So we're going to just make up some sort of key for this array. And then for the fields, we're just going to have a title. And we're going to say, yep, by default, that field should be selected. That's what this does. So the checkbox is selected by default. Um, this is a piece of the sample code that's nice. It assigns a report title. OK. Then we have a select statement that just builds a manual piece of SQL. And um, from is empty, where group by and order by is empty. So the only SQL we're going to get is just select hello reporting as hello. But in order for that hello field to, um, <coughs> to tell, um, this is actually in the slides for the next example. But um, in order for that hello field, field to be, uh, for that hello reporting word to get displayed, you need to tell uh, Civi in that the column headers array hello, uh, that the hello field has been activated. OK, uh, we'll see shortly in the real example how that gets activated. Um, basically, it checks if that field is selected in params, right? So you. You have to both build the select statement and also build the column headers array to say which ones are visible. Out of all those possible columns they could have selected, which ones do we want to be visible? In this case, we only have one column, and we want it to be visible, so we put it in the column headers array. And then we have the standard post process. It builds the query. We don't do anything else with it. We're not going to alter the display, so we're done. And then if we go into, oh, uh, Civi got, uh, my Civi site got closed. Um, I've got Civi site open. We can take a look. Let's 
see what that looks like. Administer Civi report, create new report from template. I don't think I've saved any copies of this report yet. Okay, so my I already enabled the um, extension, so it's already got all those report templates there. And there you go. There's one column called with the title "Hello." Preview the report. Hello report. That was a fun example. That's all. <laughs> I know it doesn't doesn't help you uh, sum up the mo find the most important donors, but <laughs> hopefully it shows how 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 simple it can be um, when it's not doing any work. <laughs> okay. So we're going to want to add more real tables and fields, okay? So we go to the construct function and look a little bit in more detail. Um, the first level of keys is usually a table name and the default, and you'll, we'll, we'll take a look at why that uh, usually automatically works to have it select that table. So the first level of keys is usually a table name and there, uh, there are some other things you can use. You can use alias to give the table another name. This is used when we use the same table multiple times in a query. So if you create a new, one report that I want to create is a new relationship report. And relationship report's bugging me lately. Uh, I want it, for example, it, it always starts from contact ID B. I think I want it to start from contact ID A and, or maybe have the option to switch. And uh, so that kind of thing. So. If you have relationships, you have three tables, CVCRM contact, CVCRM relationship, and then CVCRM contact again, right? So you need an alias the second time you include it. Otherwise, because otherwise, if you just leave it at the defaults, it'll generate the same alias both times. Because um, in that post process function, there is um, a, a call this.begin post process. Uh, if you ever feel like reading it, <laughs> It does a lot of useful default setting, including setting those aliases that you see. Like uh, CiviCRM contact becomes contact underscore Civi report. You might have noticed if you print out some of the SQL. Okay, so it just takes it, chops it off at the underscore, and that's the default alias. And if you put the same table in twice, you'll get the same alias, and then it'll blow up. So it won't select from the right table, right? Okay, so you give the table another name. Um, the DAO and the BAO. You can use either one. Uh, haven't gone and looked up the examples where they needed to use the BAO. Usually you just use DAO um, <coughs> for the table. Um, this is also just used for setting defaults for fields. Uh, so if you don't fill in the columns array completely and you skip some of them, like name, title, uh, type, like you have to tell it whether it's a string or an int and all those things, well, actually, you don't have to do all that if you put in this DAO because it'll set some defaults for you by looking at the uh, field definitions for that, for the class associated with that table. Okay, so most tables in CIVI do have an associated DAO. So you put that in and you can make your, cons your construct array shorter. Okay, um, section um, grouping. This one's uh, not documented. I should add it. Section, uh, the column selectors are displayed in the form. It's hard to see because the default CSS doesn't highlight, doesn't put a box around the different groups, but if you've got like a membership report, you've got some columns that apply to the contact, and you can, you know, even though they're coming from different tables, like the email table, the phone table, etc., you want those in the contact section, and then all the things that relate to memberships, you can put them in there. Unfortunately, this is on a table-by-table -table basis. You can't put grouping on a field-by-field -field basis, I don't think. So sometimes there's one field maybe from membership that, might, that you'd actually like to see in the, that you record when somebody signs up for new membership and you'd like to put it in the contact, but you can't. So okay, so, but you can put different tables into different groupings. Um, 
the default CSS should, uh, so we should really have a patch on that to highlight that a little bit. <coughs> um, um, we will cover more on these other um, big, big groups like fields. And name, to specify the table name. Again, this is used when we use the same table name multiple times in the query. Because I may be stating the obvious here, but if I put the same table name, if I put the same table in twice, I can't use the same array key because it's a PHP array. So if I do, they'll overwrite each other. Right? So that's why, so normally the name comes from the um, key, which, but if you don't, if you have to use it twice, you have to put in name to say what the table name is because it's not going to be the same as the key. Okay. Um, this is a good tip right from the docs. It, um, we'll see how this works in a more advanced example. Actually, I'll leave that for now. I should move that to the advanced example. Um, there's also a separate, this is a, 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 a relatively unknown feature. There's a separate options array that you can create in Construct, which is for controls you want on the report that are not tied to the table. People often jump through, I've seen lots of sample reports where people put in a field and then do all kinds of PHP to remove it from the SQL and things like that. Um, <clears throat> if you want an option that's not tied to any SQL at all, as in, um, let's say for example, we have some sort of uh, membership numbers and maybe we want an option to show membership numbers in old format or something for exporting to an old system. Um, so that would be an option that has nothing to do with changing the SQL query. Um, if you're going to do, especially, well, especially if you're going to do it in PHP. So if the old format is something you need to look up or something like that, then you're, um, you can use the options array. It's undocumented and actually seems to be broken in 4.5 though, so okay in my test. So um, <coughs> it worked in 4.4. Um, <coughs> in uh, the CIVI uh, CRM, um, in the Canadian tax receipts extension, we used it for one of our reports um, where there's uh, turn off advanced eligibility hooks because if people have thousands of, um, if you want to display the eligible status and some users of that extension have advanced checking for whether something's eligible but if you want to print out like just a thousand eligible contributions, you don't want to run a hook for every line unless you have a super server. Okay, so we use it for things that have nothing to do with um, changing the SQL. Uh, that, so a little bit more about fields, just a couple of the options for now. There are some true-false options. Required means the column cannot be deselected. Um, it shows up as an X in the report in the column options. Default means it can be deselected, but the checkbox is on by default. No repeat. Repeated values in the column are removed in altered display. Um, some of the, some of the built-in core reports do this. Um, it doesn't happen automatically. Usually that piece is copied into altered display that goes and removes the no repeats. But it's a convention for that to t that you can use. Uh, no display um, <coughs> doesn't appear in the output, but can be used in the query. Now, probably some SQL experts might be thinking, well, I could certainly, I can use things in the query, like in the where clause and things like that, even if it is in the select clause, it doesn't matter. But maybe you need to use it in PHP code that reads dollar rows. So generate it, but don't display it. Okay, um, a basics of the filters array. The filters array uh, contains title, the default value, if you want to set a default value, operator type, which is the form control to use to enter the filter. Okay, um, the form control, uh, some of these things are in the wrong order. I shouldn't have put them in yet. Um, a list of options if the operator type is, you can show a list of options um, and the variable type. Okay, let's, let's get, that slide should be down before example three, not example two, sorry. Okay, select, choosing visible columns. We have two, um, okay, so we're gonna get to the next example shortly. 
I did already mention this, that select, the select function has two jobs, to generate the SQL um, for the select piece of the, the, cl the uh, SQL clause. Um, and the other thing is to create the column headers array, which determines which of the fields is visible. The default code, which usually the select, in all the sample reports, again, the select is really, really long. I think even, like this was on my you know, fifth day on the job, I was still going, why are they, the, the, the example select probably has like, every report has something like three fields they want to handle differently. So it'll always say, if field name equals this, do this, 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 you know, otherwise do this and this and this. And, um, you know, and it, it's just uh, depending, the select uh, function might scroll off the screen. And so here's, here's a minimal one, but it still has the main piece of that, you, what's usually in the sample code. Um, basically what it says is, um, if the field is required, it looks at the field definition in the columns um, array, and if it's required, then show it. But, or if it's in the parameters um, fields, so in dollar params that got sent into post-process, the user selected it. So then we want to display it. So well, that's what this does. It says, if it's required or if it was selected, then add it to this, then add a clause um, to the select for that field, and also add it to the column headers to say it's going to be visible. Um, <coughs> and it starts using right away those aliases, table name, underscore field name, etc., to make sure that uh, those are consistent everywhere. Um, you. Um, those are built, as I said, for you in the parent class at the beginning of post-process. So it uses those aliases, which kind of blows up the code and makes it look longer than it is. Um, sometimes uh, when I'm trying to do a quick and dirty change, I will just, just type the alias both in the columns array and in the select and the from. You have to remember to use the same one everywhere. But this does keep them consistent. So this builds up the, um, <coughs> the other uh, next, the other piece you need if you want to select data from real tables is a from statement, which um, brings, builds up the joins. This builds, um, this is usually pretty simple. It builds up um, a clause and stores it in uh, dollar this underscore from. It's usually straightforward, but it may need logic when a report needs to operate in two fundamentally different ways. Some of the reports in SQL are very complex, uh, sorry, in CVCRM, are pretty complex forms. They're not just a simple report with a couple of, oh, let's show these options and let's filter on this value. They can operate in fundamentally different ways. And sometimes a small change um, makes the report uh, way more complicated. Like the contributions, the basic contributions or bookkeeping reports, if it should show soft credits or regular credits or both, it's a fundamentally different from clause. One is just from contributions, CiviCRM contributions. The other is from CiviCRM contributions union, you know, CiviCRM contributions where soft credit equals one. Um, so the, um, the, the piece of code just for the from clause and that report is, is about yay long if you were to print it, right? So it's, um, uh, that one's um, one that you may need to uh, debug quite a bit in MySQL if you're having problems with it. But um, for that one, it, it uh, builds three temporary tables and joins them. It, you know, it gets complicated. I also have one, you get these requests from the clients, and as I'm going along more and more with Civi CRM, I'm going, uh, reporting, I'm getting more and more inclined to just say no. I want one, one more rep I want one report that if I select this option, it expands and shows me all the contributions as detailed line items. But if I select this option, it summarizes it. And there's all this. Well, that turns it into a rid ridiculously complicated PHP that says, if this, then, you know, do a union and a sum, and this one does a subselect, and, you know. And, um, you know, as a programmer in me, I'm like, I kind of enjoyed making those, but no. <laughs> no, that's just, let's have two reports. I know it's a pain to look after two report files, but the, the SQL just gets so ridiculously complicated. <laughs> and, you know, let's, let's simplify. So that, 
But it is possible to have a complicated from, but it's usually pretty simple. So for, here's a simple example. It pulls in real data, highlights the construct and the select functions. Okay. Example two, basic, extend CRM report form. Um, let's take a look at it actually real quick. So basically it lets you select, it's going to show the contact name. That one is, is uh, required. It's going to show, let you choose the first name, the last name, the birth date, that's it. It also does show the um, custom fields for individuals. And you have an option to order by and to filter by last name. Okay, so we got, none of these people have uh, this stuff filled in, but um, there you go. That's a very simple report. So you can see how that gets built up here in CiviCRM contact. Um, here's a few little things. Expose contact ID equals false. I'm not sure if this is a new thing. I think it was around in 4.42, but um, I had to set this. Just probably just because I'm overriding and cutting the class down so much um, that in some, of, in some of the core examples, this is probably already done somewhere, but it, if you didn't set that to false, it stuck the contact ID in as an extra column. Uh, here's an extra uh, column for you. You didn't ask for it, but <laughs> contact ID. So I didn't want that. If I set it to true, we would see that contact ID. I'll, if we get back to it, we'll see it. Um, Custom group extends is a magic um, thing that's nicely documented in the wiki that um, says if you want to bring in custom fields for any of the core um, entities, um, then go ahead and put them in this array. So you can say array of individual, comma, membership, comma, contribution, and any custom fields related to those entities will, will go in for individuals, organizations, etc. you have to specify the contact type. You don't just get to say contact to bring in all custom fields. Or actually, if you do, it'll only work if those custom fields are not applied to the subcontact type. Okay, so um, that's a magic uh, ex extra thing that gives us those custom fields. This is another little magic thing. Auto-include indexed fields as order buys. Again, it's documented in the wiki. And what it does is it lets you, uh, for all the custom fields that it brings in, it lets you, it automatically adds them, um, sorry, as, as order buys. And so you can add them here. All right, and if I hit preview report, that's going to be the same. Um, and you'll see that uh, it brought in that contact ID column. Okay, uh, so um, ID, the contact, I want to use the contact ID. Actually, I don't make use of it in this basic example, but usually you go always include the contact ID. Um, oh, there's the DAO that sets a lot of defaults for me so that, for example, I don't have to put the type for all the fields. I don't have to tell it that ID is an int. Um, sort name as a string and so on. Okay, so ID um, is no display, it's hidden, it's on by default, and uh, it's required. Um, basically, it's always there. We want to make sure that's always there because it's used in so many of the pieces of sample code that we're usually going to use. Sort name is required as well, so that that's shows up as an X. We can have first name, last name, birth date. You see, we didn't have to put anything but the title. We didn't even have to say, you know, and again, it just automatically knows by the field name because of the parent class uh, using this as the default for the, the select clause. Uh, filters, uh, last name, we put in there. We do have to tell it the title, the operator type, and the type. We tell it that it's a string, and the operator type is CRM report form op string. Okay, that is where I was telling you that is the um, 
In the slide it says that for the filters, um, the last name which is a string, so it automatically adds this control for us. It automatically adds the option to search by contain, starts with, is equal to, etc. If it was an integer, if we said it, we told it we wanted the integer control, it would automatically add is less than, is greater than, is between. Okay, so that's how that, that's what the operator type does, adds that control. Type string and grouping goes into contact fields. There's only one grouping and the CSS doesn't really show very much anyway, but put it in for future proof. Okay. This um, sign the report title, initialize these arrays, and again, um, for each field, um, if, um, if there is a fields array in this table, in case it's a really weird table that doesn't have one, um, probably could have taken that line out. Uh, but anyway, just for, yeah. Uh, so for each uh, table, if the f again, once again, if the field is required or if it's show if it's in the params, then yeah, let's let's display it. So we add them to arrays, and then we implode that array with the commas and make the select clause. Okay, so from is really simple. This dot uh, from CVCRM contact. Throw in the alias using the usual u example. You can copy that from the sample files. Uh, this underscore aliases, again, it's built at the beginning of post process. So you can rely on it being there. This dot AC, uh, underscore ACL from is, adds a whole bunch of joins to the from. If there are any ACLs, it'll join with the, um, the CiviCRM, um, sorry, the uh, CiviCRM contact ACL uh, group, a group contact cache. Yeah, so, uh, for some reason that's escaping me right now. But it joins with those and uh, makes sure that it doesn't show contacts the current user can't see. So that's um, nice. You want to make sure you put that in. It doesn't automatically happen uh, in case you wanted to make a super powerful report that showed everything, right? So you have to put it in. Um, that gets built here, by the way, but we usually don't have to worry about that. So once again, here it sets all those defaults for you in the parent. You can read that if you felt like it. But it sets all those defaults for you at this resolution. I don't have my usual controls. Okay. Then builds a query, builds a rows, and assigns it to the Smarty template, etc. Okay, so that's another simple example. Um, oh. It's 11 a.m. I would, would have liked to stop for questions there, but let me just quickly run through here. Um, are actually fairly close to being done. Um, okay, so I want to do an example where we play with these, with these things that let you put in the same table twice, because it gets interesting when you put the same table in twice. Um, to, if you have the name key, um, oh, so this, this, is, this is when you put the same field in twice, okay? So this also works with fields as well as tables. Um, I accidentally put the piece about the table names in an earlier slide, right? Um, so the name field, you can give the field another name. This defaults to the key for the field array, but used when the same field needs to appear twice. So for example, maybe you want to show birth date and you also want to show it as age. And then you're going to reformat the age one to do the math or whatever. So you, again, because it's a PHP array, you can't just put birth date in twice. It'll overwrite it. Um, actually, you can't use the same field key even between a different table. So if you, you, know, if you have ID in, uh, in, con in CiviCRM contact, and then you pull in a membership table, and you want to put the membership ID you have to call it something like membership ID. If you use this, if you put in the exact same field name in that, um, uh, you use the same array key twice, even in two different subarrays, they won't show up properly on the form. One of them will be missing, or they'll they'll get out of order. So you can't use the same field key. So 
you need to use the once you've um, if you don't use the real field name as the array key, you have to tell it the name so that it selects the right field. Alias lets you give the table another name just for this field. Um, so um, even though all you're let's say selecting a bunch of stuff from the membership table, maybe um, for whatever reason, for you want this field to be in there in the membership table, but you you um, can use an alias. Okay, so what this would be useful for is if you want to put one of the contact fields in the membership array. That would look that would be really nasty, and maybe make sure you comment it what you're doing. But if you do. <laughs> then you could put a contact field in the membership. So that way you, could, you can put something from the contact right in the middle of all the membership information instead of having it all in the particular default order. Okay, DB alias lets you give the field, it, uh, I copied that part from the docs, to give, what it does, DB alias, is lets you specify the exact SQL that gets called. Normally what it calls is the name of the field, um, table name dot field name. That's the SQL that gets generated. But DB alias lets you specify the exact SQL. And statistics lets you compute stats like sum, count, and average. Uh, one more thing before we get to use those interesting options. Uh, using option groups or pseudo constants um, is uh, going to be shown in, in this third example. This lets you um, map values to labels. And the best place to figure out is to look at other reports that use the same tables. Um, this has been refactored a lot lately, so those old reports might not give you the right information. Um, you can use CRM core option group values, or you can use CRM core pseudo constant get as a generic pseudo constant. Um, and then the other thing we're going to look at here, two more minutes, is alter display, option values, and links. Um, alter display lets you change things to links. Um, Please note, altering rows one at a time in alter display is probably lower performance than fixing the SQL to generate it. Um, uh, but um, it's useful for changing uh, the display. It can be used for a lot more advanced row changes, like if you have to call a function to show something um, in PHP. OK, so for example, suppose we have a report that shows parents and children. We could use this function to remove child contact details, except for the name. So we could you know, show a bunch of things um, about those contacts, show everything for the parent, but just blank out everything for the children, depending on which user was logged in. So um, an improved example that has, so let's look at quickly the last example, then we'll be done. An improved example that has some formatted columns and multi-select filters that highlights the alter display and shows how DB alias um, and options work. Okay, so we only have a few really, really short ex time to look at this. So let's look at what are the interesting parts here. Um, <clears throat> so again, we're selecting from the contact table. Um, this time we've added prefix ID to show the Mr., Ms., etc., the gender ID. Um, so that just gives us an integer. We're also adding the birth date, and we're adding the birth date in again as age. But, you know... Um, so we're going to tell it that the name of this field is really birth date. So it selects a birth date twice. <coughs> OK. Um, now, I could have used DB alias here to, to put in a piece of SQL that did the, ma the math, subtracted the year from now, and so on. So I could have used DB alias here to specify the exact SQL and generated it right there. But I wanted to show an example of doing an alter display. So uh, I left that. Um, <coughs> Here's another example that let's, let's just show a random integer, OK? Just to, just to show that you can kind of do anything. Um, we're going to show a random integer, and here's what db alias is going to generate that exact SQL. So that's what it does, and it doesn't <coughs> you know, need table name dot field. OK, within filters, we have um, some of the same things, except that now we have options for some of the things we've added in. So we have, as well as operator type, which, f which form control do we want? We want the multi-select, because we'd like to be able to choose you know, females, males, etc. cetera. Um, this is also a string. Um, and we get it, a list of options from the pseudo-constant uh, class. 
and we tell it we want the options for the gender ID field. Okay. This is the more recent way to do this. Um, birth date, we're also going to have a, an available filter. We tell it that it's a date so that it shows us a calendar control for the filter. Okay, uh, what else? And the options example. I'd like to have larger integers. This is nothing. Um, so show me some larger random integers. Um, this piece is, and it'll show a checkbox for this option, which has nothing to do with um, any of the tables. So I don't need to pretend it's a, a field or anything like that. Just s for something, you don't need to pretend it's a field. So because we now have some fields that are handled differently, our select function starts to look a little bit longer. Um, we have a field that's handled specially. So this is the usual thing. If we have a field that gets handled specially, this piece gets about twice as long. Oh, that's okay. We're, once we're, we're sort of, now we're used to that. So this got about twice as long because we're going to handle random integer a little bit separate, differently. And also, if, if it says larger integers, then we're going to take that db alias, that exact SQL, and add times 10. Okay, so that's how you can use those options. And um, anyway, I'm out of, almost out of time. Let's just quick look at alter display. So now we have filled in alter display, and there are three fields where we would like to change things. And um, we're going to show a link, and we're going to pull in the values for those pseudo constants uh, for prefix ID and gender ID. And uh, out of time, but th those are quite similar to the default examples in most of the reports in CiviCRM core, so that's not that, that new if you've been spending some time looking at those. Um, and um, let's see where we're at. So we better, we are out of time. Oh no, this is an hour and 15 minute presentation, so we have got one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so yep, that's, um, here's our columns. We also like the random integer. And down here in the other options section, we can have, yep, let's have larger random integers. Um, in our filters, we get gender. It automatically gives us the options for those. Um, it gives us a date, the, the nice city serum date select for the birth date. Okay, so random integer instead of being from 0 to 10 is like 0 to 100. Okay, um, and it fills in the, the, t the gender ID, etc. And this is a link to that viewing that contact. Uh, that's, that's great. So hopefully that sort of gentle overview. <laughs> well, still not, that, still not that gentle if you, if you haven't spent a lot of time with it, but gentler than jumping into the bookkeeping report or the sidebunt report or <laughs> something like that. The GitHub uh, URL you gave us, that's where this presentation is at? Uh, the presentation slides, which I think I'll alter a tiny bit, but you can get the current version of those slides from uh, the um, session page, if you want the slides, and there's a link on the session page now to the extension, so you can download the extension. Well, it's on GitHub only, so you have to choose the GitHub option, download zip. I haven't published it or anything. I think I'll add a few more. I want to add a few more reports before I publish it as an, as an extension. Maybe three more progressively more interesting reports still. Okay, so alternatives to CIVI report. Um, uh, if this uh, made you say, oh no, no way, <laughs> that's, no good. that's not going to work. Um, well, Civ Civi Visualize, again, it's a programmer's tool, um, this time for JavaScript programmers. Uh, it's really, really nice, it keeps beautiful dashboards. Um, the thing is, it doesn't have the export to CSV or PDF features, so um, it, um, it could be wonderful if people start adding in some of those features to Civi Visualize. It would be a much more modern front-end reporting. Um, but uh, regardless, of, you should definitely install it. Um, if, uh, there's going to be a wonderful talk on Forena reports coming up, which is Drupal-only 
looks like um, uh, the equivalent in WordPress is exports and report. So just use, why not, someti sometimes let's just use SQL to get the data out. If you are a Drupal only place or a WordPress only place, sometimes if you don't need all of those integration options, you just want to see the data, let's just write a SQL query and get the data. So instead of having to deal with the PHP, right? So you could use those add-ons. Um, of course, if you have complex needs, you may need to get into Java reporting tools, which are really, really mature, um, like um, Pantaho and others of that type. Um, they're, they're, they're wonderful, very powerful. You can set up dashboards. You can create interactive reports. Um, but you need a server that supports that, hosting that supports that. Um, I looked into PHP reporting tools. I did a survey about nine months ago to try to see what else was out there as a basis to sort of bring into Civi CRM, uh, maybe as an extension. But unfortunately, the state of PHP reporting tools, I found, was still pretty basic. Um, most, of them, some, most of them look like they were, uh, the user interface design is circa 2002 to 2006, and you know, they're, um, some of them are more or less powerful nevertheless. But um, what I did was try to create even the constituent um, summary report that just prints out. In each one, I say, okay, let me just try to create the cons I was like, if I could create the constituent summary report and the event income summary, then this one would have promise. But almost none of them could do that, and hence Civi Report 101. But <laughs> Because the power that's there by, the, by giving you a, the ability to build a form for your users that's in Civi Serum, the, the, the difficulty comes with that power of the, all that integration. It generates CSV, it generates PDF, it lets you add people to groups. Um, adding all that on um, to uh, these third party tools is quite uh, difficult. The best one I found that I thought had promise was called PHP Reports. Um, and you can try those out too. Topics for a CV Report 201, I wish it could have done statistics and maybe custom summary tables. Uh, maybe I'll add it to the extension. Creating a custom tem template, something like the event income report that's completely a custom template. Advanced grouping like the side point reports, etc., and charts. So thank you very much, everyone.